I struggled to think back to my neurology lectures in the sleep section. There was maybe a slide, maybe two about narcolepsy. And all I remember was excessive sleepiness and cataplexy. But I didn't have cataplexy, and I had never been sleepy enough that I would actually fall asleep unintentionally. So how could I have narcolepsy? It was weird for me. It actually took me a while to understand that narcolepsy doesn't just look like your typical image of a guy falling asleep with his head in his cereal bowl. It can look different for everyone. For me, it was actually really sneaky and it was almost invisible. I mean, at first it just looked like having trouble concentrating and I only know that looking back now. So these are some things I learned about narcolepsy. Narcolepsy is a chronic neurological disorder that impairs the brain's ability to regulate sleep-wake cycles. It affects one in 2,000 people, that's 200,000 Americans and 3 million people worldwide. The major symptoms of narcolepsy include excessive daytime sleepiness, which are extreme periods of sleepiness during the day that for a person without narcolepsy would feel like staying up for 48 to 72 hours. Then there's cataplexy, which are striking sudden episodes of muscle weakness, which are triggered by strong emotions like laughter, fear, or anger. The episodes can last anywhere from a few seconds to a few minutes, and it can vary from slackening up the jaw to your whole body falling down. And during the episodes, the person stays fully conscious, even if they're unable to speak. A third symptom is hypnopompic and hypnagogic hallucinations, which are really fancy terms for hallucinations that you have when you're falling asleep or waking up. This can be visual, auditory, or tactile. And they're often scary. I've heard pe some people with narcolepsy hallucinate a man like breaking into their house or robbing them. Another symptom is sleep paralysis. This is the inability to move your body when you're falling asleep or waking up. And it's during this time that you often get those scary hallucinations I talked about. The last symptom is disrupted nighttime sleep, which might seem surprising to people because you think of people with narcolepsy as sleeping all the time. But in reality, the brain's ability to regulate sleep weight cycles is completely off. So while you might struggle with sleepiness during the day, you might actually struggle to fall asleep or stay asleep at night. There are two forms of narcolepsy. Narcolepsy type 1 is narcolepsy with cataplexy, and narcolepsy type 2 is narcolepsy without cataplexy, which is what I have. The diagnosis typically involves a 24-hour sleep study with a nighttime portion that's called a polysomnography and a daytime portion, which is the multiple sleep latency test. During the studies, they measure your brain waves, and they're mainly looking to see how fast you get into REM sleep. There's currently no cure for narcolepsy. Treatment is mainly symptom management with things like wake-promoting agents like stimulants, which people use to feel more awake during the day. There are also sedative medications that increase the amount of deep sleep you get at night. People also take antidepressants, which can help with cataplexy. And doctors also recommend scheduled daytime naps. So going back to my story, my sleep doctor gave me stimulants to help me feel more awake during the day. Even though I was still in shock that I could have narcolepsy, I was also kind of relieved because there was finally an explanation for my sleepiness. And I realized that life didn't have to feel that way. And there were also medications that I could use to fix it. So I was glad that I'd finally be able to study again without it being such a struggle. So in higher spirits, I started my third year clinical rotation in internal medicine. The first days were really good. I felt so much more awake, and it was definitely easier to pay attention. 
Unfortunately, I soon found out that the stimulants were only a band-aid. See, I was working 10 to 12 hours at the hospital and also had to study for at least two more hours at night. As the weeks passed, I became so sleep deprived, I started falling asleep right when I got home without eating dinner or even brushing my teeth. I also started having more trouble waking up in the morning so that I would skip breakfast as well. I became physically and mentally exhausted. One night, my boyfriend was over at my apartment and I just started crying uncontrollably. He hugged me and asked me what was wrong and I told him, I just feel so tired. Which might seem like kind of a dumb thing to cry about, but I was just so desperate for sleep at that point. My boyfriend tried to make me feel better and told me, you know, you can do it, you can keep going. But inside, I knew I just couldn't keep going like this. So I decided to stop and I asked for a leave of absence. Ultimately, I decided to leave medical school. It was an extremely hard decision because this was my dream for almost 10 years. And I really miss wearing that white coat. But at the same time, I know that I never want to feel that unhealthy or exhausted ever again.